So depending on your use case, this is a bit of an upgrade from a previous video to move an entire row with a checkbox or some other condition. In this case, I'm going to get rid of the checkbox and we're just gonna put a big X in the column when we're ready to move it. But essentially we want to move data from this sheet to this sheet when we put an X in cleared. And we can see, all right, it has the same format here. We're all good. Um, here's the script we're using. Straightforward like most of them have been. Make sure we're on the right sheet. Make sure it's at the right column. Make sure that it's the right type of edit. Get the target sheet. I've added this because if the sheet, if the target sheet is already maxed out on rows, then it's actually going to throw an error uh, when we try to copy the data over. So went ahead and added this that just says if the last row with data, and that's what this formula does. This method, get last row, gets the last row with data. That's very, very important. If that is equal to the max rows, which is the total number of rows, regardless of whether they have data or not, go ahead and add 20 rows to the bottom. Then here, we simply get the range at the original sheet, at the purchases sheet, and use the copy two to the target sheet. Now we're going to get last row plus one, because if we have, as here, if we have four rows of data, I don't want to copy it to this row, I want to copy it to this row. So get last row plus one, row one, one row, sorry, column one, one row, five columns, and let's just copy over only the contents that if we apply any conditional formatting or formatting at all, that doesn't go as just the data. And then of course, delete the row from the active sheet. Works great, there it is. Now, what if this is not actually the last row? For instance, what if this data, what if, what if this sheet is being used for more than just holding this? What if this is a, a dashboard sheet and there's several different pieces of information on different columns? Now we cannot just get the last row because, let's try to run that. It's still going to get the last row but the last row isn't here. The last row is here. So we need to do something to fix that so that instead of just getting the last row, it exclusively looks in the range we care about. Let's go ahead and undo that. So instead of just using this script where we just copy it at the last row plus one, we're going to use this script. Now most of this is the same. Make sure that the edit happened at the right place. Make the copy. Here is where it's different. So in order to get the last row of this column, we first want to read the entire relevant range in. So we're just going to use column one of the target sheet. Part one as the date and as part of this, this range. So we're going to get the entire column one. So row one, column one, and target sheet get last row. So it's going to call everything in column one down to, oh, it's gonna start here, everything in column one down to row 11. Row 11 has the last piece of data for the entire sheet. I'm going to declare a variable C outside of my for loop. This is important because I'm going to use that variable C later. So if we were to just do for bar i equals zero, i is less than c length, i is plus. If we were to use this standard notation, the variable i is only available in the for loop. It's not available after. I want to keep it available after. So. We're going to use this variable C that we define outside the for loop and call that as the variable of the for loop as long as C is less than 
the length of C data, keep increasing increments C by one on each pass. Then if C data, this array, if the value at row C, right, because that's incrementing up, column one, since it does create a two-dimensional array, if that is blank, break. And break just takes you completely out of the loop. So it doesn't just keep running through the entire for loop. Once it hits that condition is met, it just quits out. Uh, then we're going to increment C one more time because all that has found is here, I want, it, but since it's in the array, it's, it's zero indexed, but for the spreadsheet, we need it one indexed. So we're just gonna increment it one more time. Same as before, if, I actually wanna use this a little bit differently. If C is equal to the max rows, then insert after C. Then here at the bottom, rather than calling here, we called target sheet dot get last row plus one. Rather than calling that, we're just going to call C. Now, it puts it here rather than putting it down in row 12. It actually puts it in row 6 where we want. And we can find it again. And comes to row 7, just like we want. So the important thing here is just make sure that the column you are using for the two-dimensional array of values, make sure that that is the correct column. So in this case, I do want it to be on column one. There could be situations you want that on column three for C, column five for E, whatever that is. And then make sure that the value, the variable, is declared outside the for loop so that it's accessible outside of the for loop, below the for loop, rather than only existing in the for loop.